Hello Nuggets. All right, let's talk about the game. So during quarantine, um, in the six months that I wasn't recording any videos, I started working on a game. I, I worked on a couple of games, um, but uh, started the idea and then changed it because either the scope was too much or what you know didn't like it, did the prototype, didn't like it. But then I hit on this uh, idea, on this game, and I started making it and I started to get into it and I thought, oh, this is pretty good. Um, and... I worked religiously on it. I was doing a good 12, 14 hours a day on the game when not writing or doing other stuff, right? I, I was in it. I was in the zone. Um, working on it full time. Um, and I'm going to show you a little bit of it, actually. Let's see. Can I bring it up? How do I do that? Is that up? Yeah, okay. All right. So this is the game. So I'm using the Godot engine, which is fantastic, by the way. It's a 2D. It's a 3D and 2D engine, but... I'm using it primarily as a 2D engine. I don't know much about 3D, so I can't say. So it's a tower defense game. This engine's fantastic. The uh, scripting language is effectively Python. Um, it's its own thing. It's called GD script, Godot script. But I mean, really, it's Python, right? So any any coder will look at this and go, yeah, that looks like Python, right? So it's very similar to that, which I didn't know, so I had to learn it. And you know what? It's such a good language. It's it's really intuitive. Um, so I'm loving this engine. I'm like deeply in love with this engine, Godot. Uh, I much prefer it to Unity. And much as I love Unreal, um, I wanted to work. This is more appropriate for what I want to do because I want to work on a 2D game. And Unreal, the 2D stuff in Unreal is just, it's, it's not their thing. They have it, but it's not what they focus on. Let me show you a little bit of the game. Uh, how do I start it? Okay, so it's called Demon Defense. So it's a tower defense game, right? I'll show you a bit of the tutorial screen. So you basically have these things called sinners in tower defense. They're called creeps. Uh, and they walk along a path to get to the end. And you place, in my case, minions, but they're towers. And the towers uh, shoot at the enemies. Um, and you can upgrade them. And you get cash when you, up when you kill the enemies, the sinners. Uh, you upgrade your, your minions, they get stronger and stronger, and you're basically trying to stop them all from getting to the end, and then there's controls. All right, so so that's... Um, oh, do I have a save? Well, not anymore, I don't. Um, so I did some work on it. I'm not going to show you this, but this is just like an intro thing. Um, so the idea is that you would work through this entire map... Um, and is that too loud? No, it's good. Uh, you work through this map and each uh, level has a different map. So let me show you. Each level has a different map and you want to get all the way to the end, uh, which is called Old Scratch, I think I called it. Um, and in each one, there's different types of enemies and you get new towers, new minions that you can use to attack them and you unlock skills and there's a whole skill screen. This is not the skills that we'll be using. These are just temporary. I put them in for a play test, uh, but there's going to be like a whole um, skill tree, right? So for each minion, you can unlock different things. You can make them shoot faster. You can make them upgrade cheaper, you can, different things, you know, a standard skill tree for any game. So let's play or start the first level. Uh, also, the whole thing is going to be prose. I just say it's all going to be a poem because it's kind of loosely based on Milton and um, Dante, like Inferno. It's kind of loosely based on that. Uh, I don't know why I have all of the minions. I must have unlocked something because you're not supposed to see them all. I think I have the game unlocked. Anyway, so the idea is enemies come from up here, right? And they're trying to get down here. And these are just anims, you know, and they come through, you'll see them coming here, and then you build minions to uh, attack them. I'll show you a little bit of it. And they can't shoot while they attack. Uh, they can't shoot rather while you're upgrading them. So you have to time your upgrades and stuff, and you have to figure out, okay, where am I gonna spend my money? Like, this is just a rock. It says they're a rock-throwing demon. So this is what the up, the build panel looks like. And then if you click on them, you can actually upgrade different aspects. And, of course, to upgrade them takes time. There's a lot of strategy involved because 
the more money you have left over at the end of the round, the more you get from interest. So you don't want to spend it too quickly. Um, let's see, who should we put in? Let's put in the Zengora. And, you know, there's a lot of work. You know, there are three or four. There are four maps in the prototype. Um, it's a fully playable game, right? I mean, there's no ending to it. <laughs> um, well, there is. You can beat each level, but there's no end game as such. It just gets harder and harder as each round progresses. You can also send them early, get a bit of cash. You'll see I've got 104. Send them early, I get a little bonus. Um, so that's basically it, right? And it gets you can make it play faster if you want it. I'm going to upgrade here. And really, what I want to get is uh, probably this guy because he's a one shot kill, but he costs 250. And I only have 150. And now, if they get through to the end, like these guys are, they're going to get down here and pray, and then I'll lose lives. And obviously, if I run out of lives, the level's over. I'm playing on double speed at the moment. That's why it's going so fast. Uh, where are they? And you can see they all look a little different. They all have, um, down here it tells you what they're vulnerable to, what their problems are, whether they're vulnerable to magic damage or normal damage. Stuff like that. Oof. <laughs> I'm going to lose this one very quickly. It's actually a very difficult game. <laughs> like, it's challenging, man. Like, this guy's really powerful, but he fires really slow. And that's his range, right? So... Like, we might want to update one of these guys. Anyway, you know what? I'm not going to show you the whole game. That's it. So, let's go back to the map screen. So, I, I worked on Theatre of Pain. This level here, which is supposed to be like a, a coliseum, where they torture souls. I worked on Narthen, <laughs> which is uh, just a bog. Actually, it's a really good looking map. And then I worked on this thing called Pterix Keep, which is like a... Uh, a castle and a graveyard and stuff like that. So I have all of these ideas, right, that I want to spread over. Uh, let's quit that. Actually, let's go back to this. Okay. So that's the game. So here's the story about it, though. So I worked on that game very diligently, very hard. I bought a lot of those assets. I didn't really buy them. I support a Patreon who does them, and I, they looked awesome. I'm like, oh, I'm going to use that. So... Most of the art comes from that thing, PV Games. Some of the art is me, but I'm not an artist, as I've mentioned before. So it's very limiting. So when I found this pack, I'm like, oh, I can use this guy's stuff. You know, It didn't stitch together the way I wanted it to, so I had to work on that. But mostly I've just been designing and coding and getting the game running. Here's the issue. I worked my ass off right, to get to a playable prototype, something, a demo, right, that I could send out to people and say, Shall I go forward with this? Like, do you play this and say, hey, this is really good. I want to keep going, you know, because I don't want to waste my time for the next two years on a game that's going to crash, right? And the most disheartening thing about this whole process is that I couldn't even get feedback. I couldn't even get people to play the demo. Like, I've got it up on itch.io. I did posts on Reddit. I sent out on Facebook to my friends. I've reached out to everyone I can. And everyone's just doing their own shit and it's a weird time and everything. But I can't, I think I've had two people play the game. Two people. And it's reached hundreds, right? Um, and it's, that's the hurdle that is really fucking hard to overcome. Now, I have no money for marketing and I don't really want to spend any until I know at least I have something. But I'm caught between, is this a product of my insular my, my my introverted lifestyle is it because i don't reach out very often that when i do reach out they're not listening you know is it is my life become a facebook algorithm where because i'm not actively engaged in the community the community forgets about me which is understandable i get it um or is it just that I don't know. Or is it that more people played it and they just didn't like it and they didn't tell me? It makes it so hard to know. Like, I'm actually okay with that. I was okay if I sent it out, because I love creating new content. So if I sent it out to 100 people and 20 of them wrote back and said, I've got to be honest, I didn't enjoy it. That's great. I'm like, cool. On to the next thing. I've got tons of ideas. There's so many things I want to work on. 
what was really disheartening and really discouraging is the com the wasteland, the tumbleweeds, <laughs> just blowing through the um, the landscape of my game. I got no interest whatsoever. Really good friends didn't play it, you know, and I know I had one per one one friend on Facebook who I never see. I woke I worked with five years ago, Dave Ballard, who played it, and I was like my heart. I could have cried when he played it. It was and he gave me a great note actually. But that was it. <laughs> that was all I got, right? That and some stranger who played it, and his comment was, I played it, I liked it. That was it. I mean, like, so I don't know what to do. I love making games. I want to keep working on them. But I'm like, okay, I'm kind of at, what do I do here? How do I, is it, am I just giving up too easy? Is it the... Is this that situation where just because no one gives you any feedback or no, just because no one likes your work, let's assume they don't like it, just because no one doesn't like your work doesn't mean you can't give up. You have to believe in your work and keep going. Well, if that's what this situation is, I'm in trouble because I don't even know if I believe in my work. I like it. I think it looks cool, but I'm not in a situation to spend two years working on this or a year or whatever, or try and raise money for it, just to find that it's a fucking turkey. I guess I just don't trust myself enough yet. So I don't know what you do. I, I literally have no idea. I, I put a post up on Reddit before I released the demo saying, because I thought this was going to come up. I'm like, hey, how do I get people to test my game? I just want to get some feedback, and I don't know how to do it. And I got more replies to that than I did to me putting the game up. The replies I got were, dude, put it on Reddit, we'll play it. <laughs> and I know Reddit isn't a single person, so I get that that person's opinion doesn't pass on. But I got that answer a couple of times on that thread. You know, yeah, dude, put it on Reddit, people will play it. Nope, not one person. So now I'm into, okay, is it a problem with the game? Is it a problem with the way I'm trying to market it? I hate saying that I'm marketing it, because all I'm doing is, hey guys, play my game. But it, that's marketing, right? Because I see games on Reddit. I see people putting posts up saying, hey, I've worked on a new thing. And they get like 500 views and 40 comments for a fucking bouncing bunny. Like there's no content there. And I don't know what it is. I think it must be, maybe it's my personality. Maybe it's something in the way I write these posts that I don't even recognize that my personality is in there. Because I think I'm just writing a a blanket statement just saying, hey guys, I'm working on this, I'd love some feedback. But maybe they're reading more into it. Maybe that doesn't appeal to people. Maybe they don't want to hear that, you know? I don't know. And this I really do need help on. So if anyone's got any ideas, like, are there groups? Are there groups of people that you can go to? Like, you know, when I'm writing plays, there's writers groups. There's reading groups. There's cold reading groups. There's There's... Places you can submit the work to, for people to evaluate, to say, you know, you have to pay for it, but I'd pay, I'd pay a hundred bucks right now for someone to play this game. Someone, not just any old person, right? But, but a company to play this game and spend an hour with it and write back a little log and say like, well, here's the problems. Or yeah, this will work, this won't work. Just something, some form of guidance that isn't me relying on myself. And saying that out loud, I think that's the problem. But, I don't know. Worked really hard on it. And I think it's good. <laughs> That's the thing. I think it's good. It's fun. It's a really fun game. It's got some issues with it. It's not original. I mean, it's a, the context and the, the narrative is original. You play the bad guys, not the good guys. But um, the actual gameplay elements are fairly standard for a tower defense. A um, couple of little things in there, but not... Not really, but there are tons of tower defense games. They come out all the time that don't have a basically a new thing. All they have is a new theme, you know, and they do su they're successful. So I don't know. That's where we're at. Uh, I was going to work on it today, and every time I open it up again, I'm still feeling kind of uh, I'm, I don't know, gone off it because I'm like, well, what am I doing? I'm going to work on this, and then I'm going to spend a year and be really proud of it, and then I can't even get one person to look at the game. And I don't know what to do with it. I don't know where I go to get this publicized. Do I just need to get someone involved with me? Is it just constant fucking tweets <laughs> and Reddit posts 
and Instagrams and whatever else, and Facebooks, is that what it is? It's just like flood the market with your shit? Because I do see stuff on Reddit, on the Indie Dev and the Godot Dev, and the, there's all those subreddits um, where people are putting up just tiny, tiny little gifts of gameplay and getting a huge amount of attention. And when I put up my tiny gifts and my trailer and my posts and my blog, nothing. Nothing at all. Yeah. I don't know how you do it. I also don't know how the Reddit algorithm works. So I don't know whether or not... I thought it was just... If it's new, it goes to the new page. And if it gets upvoted, it goes to the front page. But maybe it doesn't work that way. Because I see posts on Reddit with like 150,000 upvotes. That you know hasn't been upvoted 150,000 times. And there's shit. There's nothing there. Yeah. I don't know. I know you can buy Reddit votes. I can't. That's not me. I can't be that guy. Um, all right. If you've got any ideas especially my dev friends, if anyone's watching it, how the fuck, if you've got your own game, how do you get the ball rolling with actually getting people engaged in the product, right? Following the blog and just interested in what you're doing enough that you feel encouraged to take the next step. That people will say, carry on or don't carry on. Don't carry on is a really good feedback as well. <laughs> anyway, all right, you little nuggets. That's the update. I don't know what I'm going to do. Maybe I'll go work on Blender. That's fun. I'll play. All right. Bye.